wound up out of nothing No flight plan, no manual to be found through the night We're driving in the dark without headlights Trying to find our way It's hard telling where we'll be in the coming days But I'll be there with you Talk telling where we'll be in the coming days I'll be there with you I'll be here with you Hi Troy, how are you? Hey Derek, very well, very well Fantastic to see you, and where are you speaking from today? I am beaming in from my, my home studio in Tempe, Arizona uh, This is my home studio that I've been working in and creating in for going on 15 years now. Wow, and do you make everything from your studio at home? That's where the majority of it happens. Um, obviously some of my much larger public artwork, you know, a lot of that is, is um, the terrazzo is created and installed on site. Um, and then sometimes if I need access to larger kilns than I have here, I can access those at the Mesa Art Center. But the vast majority of it happens, you know, right here with these Fantastic. Now, you, you mentioned the Mesa. Uh, is that the M M Mesa Museum of Contemporary Art? Have you, the, the, the place that you've just had a, a solo show at? Is that is that, that venue? The Mesa Art Center um, is a fantastic campus right in the heart of Mesa, Arizona. Um, I'm fortunate that I have a position uh, managing the glass studio there, um, where we've got a full hot shop, um, you know, a dozen kilns, torches, you know, workbenches, cold working, everything I need there. Um, but then also, and that's where I teach um, and spend a lot of my days, but then also on the campus is the Mesa Contemporary Arts Museum, um, where I had a, I recently had a solo exhibition. Fantastic. I saw that on social media. It looks absolutely brilliant. How was it for you? How, how, how did you feel the show went? You know, Derek, I, I, I really couldn't be happier. Um, the whole experience was, was magical. Uh, I... I had, I had already decided, um, you know, like a, lot, like a lot of us during the pandemic, I um, did a lot of, of soul searching and, and thinking about what I wanted to do in the next coming years. And I decided to take a year off from doing any commissions and just work on really self-indulgent work that I wanted to do, that I wanted to explore. Um, and around the same time that I'd made that decision, the opportunity came to, to have the solo exhibit at the Contemporary Art Museum. So the serendipity was of those lining up was perfect. And then, yeah, it was a fantastic show. I really am happy with the work. It was well received. The staff, the team at the museum are, are fabulous. It was a fantastic experience. Now looking at the images on social media, they, they are really fascinating because it's, 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 they're, they're, they remind me a little bit of, uh, I don't know if you, if you, um, are familiar with Robert Rauschenberg, his combines, that idea of combining different images together. And I love that style. I absolutely love it. And you're doing this wonderful thing in glass, which is combining printed medium and and uh, I don't know if the screen printing. Talk us through some of the um, how that evolved, how that whole process evolved into these finished artworks. Well, well yeah. First of all, of course, you know Rauschenberg. Um, he was an influence before I realized he was an influence. Um, and I think early, early on. I mean, when I was still, I don't know who first handed me. A book on the surrealist on Salvador Dali, but it was you know elementary school, and that quickly led to you know the Dadaist and then um, Duchamp and Duchamp, you know he blew everything wide open for me personally, um, and then of course Rauschenberg. But um, the idea of taking all these different elements um, that have their own stories, their own histories, um, that resonate to different people in different in different ways, um, and then combining them with glass, which is a material that you know, over the past 25 years, I've I've developed a, a familiarity with, and, and I can I can converse with with the glass. So um, that's where I'm putting my intention. And as far as how I'm I'm putting my graphics or my imagery into the glass, it's a combination. Like you mentioned, I do some silk screening, um, you know, hand painting, uh, you know, airbrush stencils. Um, I use a and for the paints. Um, I pretty much just stick with black paints, Rocher paints, 
and all the color comes from the glass itself. Um, and then I also do a process um, that I think a lot of people are starting to explore um, using image transfers, um, where I basically can take any imagery, whether it's my own drawings or pop culture or old magazines, adverts, um, create those digitally using iron oxide to transfer those into the glass. Fantastic. I mean, it, 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 technically, it's extremely sophisticated because you're bringing a whole lot of techniques together, aren't you? And you're layering one technique on top of the other to create these wonderfully complex visual pieces. Uh, is there still transparency or is there still a degree of translucency or are they opaque and designed to be viewed um, fixed to a wall? How, how, how do they actually work when you're viewing them? Yeah, great. Uh, you, you picked up on a lot there. Um, yeah, it's definitely, technically I'm just, I'm, I'm layering all of those components. You basically I'm creating my different graphics on the sheets, layering those, fusing those together. Um, so it is fairly involved, um, multiple firings, um, but I'm definitely trying to achieve a spontaneous, um, you know, almost graffiti aesthetic where it's just piled on it on itself. It looks like it just kind of happened. Um, so, but, it, but, you know, as you might realize, it's, it's very difficult to intentionally make things look random. Of course, I'm, I'm attracted to glass. I mean, glass is such a magical material, and one of its main characteristics is its translucency. Um, so I think for all of my work, even the pieces that are fused glass mounted over um, collage work on boards, so they're predominantly on, in reflected light, um, I still leave areas of, of, of just empty clear glass or transparent glass to make windows um, for the light to bounce around between the two mediums. And then also uh, I do take these same panels, I do take these same panels and then just make them freestanding pedestal pieces, um, in which case you can definitely experience them from all angles. So, so you're bringing sculpture into the equation as well, so you're, you're viewing it in the round, so it's not just a, a two-dimensional membrane of glass, you're, you're encouraging the viewer to walk around and experience it in 360? Yeah, I am. Um, and I think those are the pieces that most resemble the combines or assemblage, um, because I am creating you know, welded steel or um, assembled wood components. Um, old furniture, whatever speaks to me at the moment. And so I'm, I'm taking these different components, arranging them into, into new sculptural forms. And then I think even the wall mounted pieces, you know, I think they're, be and I think they're beyond paintings because they are, they are a bas relief in a way. I mean, you are, you're experiencing them at least in three, three dimensions. Fabulous. Absolutely fabulous. It's really interesting. You, you were mentioning earlier about that desire to to give it that degree of spontaneity, which you get when we are obviously we are working with paints or watercolors. The process of making stained glass is very intentional, isn't it? And there's sequences and there's time gaps between those sequences. And so it's a really tricky thing. I mean, it's fantastic that you're able to pull that off because, because there are so many processes involved. It sometimes can take spontaneity out of the equation, can't it? It's a difficult thing to kind of factor in, yeah? I think for me, obviously, um you have, to have to, you have to develop um, your relationship with the materials, right? You have to put in your, your 10,000 hours so that you can just be fluid with the material. Um, but then even in the design process and every step along the way, I try to budget in time and space to allow the, the work to evolve, you know, in that moment. And did you, when you took your year off, as you were describing earlier, just to experiment, was this a new direction for you? Were you were you working with these materials in this way that culminated in this one-man show? Is that the result of this new new direction that you moved in? I just took a year where I wasn't accepting commissions, right? Where I wasn't distracting myself with the marketability of the work or pleasing a committee, nothing like that. Um, but I was very much, you know, working very diligently daily um, in the studio, probably more so than ever before. However, I think that the the body of work and the techniques had been evolving over the last 10 years. Um, you know, it, it's obviously I started with what is recognized as traditional stained glass. And even then I was really trying to get that spontaneous look um, and trying to use lead lines for gestural statements as well. But as it started to evolve further and further into what, it, what I'm now doing, this, this mixed media fused glass, um, it, it's definitely been years, years in the making, but having this year and a half 
to just lock myself in the creative space and give myself the permission to just explore. You know, I think any artist that takes the time to do that, it's going to push the work, hopefully, to another little plateau. That's fabulous. That is absolutely fabulous. It's wonderful to be able to have that time of concentrated discovery, you know, when you're working. I mean, the wonderful thing as well is you you are working in so many different materials. You're working with traditional stained glass, you're working with fused glass, but you're also doing public art. Tell us a little bit about your public art work as well. Yeah, I haven't gone after any very large scale public art commissions in a few years. Um, I started doing terrazzo designs for the city of Phoenix, um, Office of Arts and Culture. I designed the convention center flooring. Um, and that was my first foray into anything of that scale. Um, and it was fantastic. I don't know if, if you're familiar with Terrazzo, but from a design point of view, it's very much like a stained glass window because you're using strips of metal to delineate fields of color, right? So um, when I saw the open call for that and I you know, researched it and I realized that it was something that felt familiar to me, um, you know, I applied and I was lucky enough to get to do that project. But then since then, I've done some public art for uh, Scottsdale Public Art, um, which is more recognizable as stained glass. These were projects where I had taken photos of my previous autonomous stained glass, created new digital compositions and had those printed onto acrylic sheeting. So then when those were mounted outside in a temporary installation, they they looked and behaved like stained glass. They had that translucent, translucency and they spilled color onto the interior space. I mean, I love that curiosity and that kind of fearlessness about trying lots of different materials. I mean, I, I am, I in my work, I'm very, I'm, I, I continue down the sort of the route of, making stained glass windows in the traditional way. I do a little bit of etching and uh, silk screening, but to move into terrazzo floors and to, to do sculpture work, and it's just fantastic. That, there's a tremendous hunger and a curiosity that you have for pushing to pushing your vision in different materials, yes? Yeah, yeah, I, mean, I, I guess so. I think that I've just been, um, I've been really fortunate that I've, that I've just been able to kind of stumble from opportunity to opportunity. Um, I think that, you know, probably a part of it is, you know, I'm not coming personally from, from a lineage. I don't, I have very little formal education. Um, I wasn't apprenticed into um, a long standing established studio. So um, a lot of it's a little bit more guerrilla action, a little bit more, you know, punk. I'm just uh, seeking what attracts me, taking it inside, filtering it and, and doing something new with it, um, which is a fabulous, fun, free way to, to explore. Absolutely. I think it's fantastic. I, I genuinely do. So how did you get involved with glass? How did it start for you, Troy? What was the, what was the sort of germ that got you on this wonderful journey you're on? So I, you know, I grew up drawing and painting and, and I guess now looking back, making um, assemblage, you know, making combines, you know, as a kid. But then stained glass was nowhere on my radar screen at all until I was uh, backpacking through Europe. And I met uh, an architecture student who was doing research on stained glass and turned, you know, he one afternoon in a cafe started showing photographs of the post-World War II German stained glass. So it, it's that old story, you know, that, how strongly that influenced me. I'd never seen anything like it. The idea of these huge, bold fields of color and gestural line movement that they were achieving, um, and even the highly organized uh, look of it still had a spontaneous feel, um, which really resonated. So I came back to the States and found a studio to hire me as the flunky and, um, you know, learned as much as I could and, and kind of have gone from there. Probably 15 years ago or more now, I was fortunate enough to meet um, Dick Millard, who was um, at that time teaching a select group of, of stained glass painters um, out of his home in New Hampshire. And I would definitely say that that meeting and him opening the door to that world had a dramatic impact on on even just the idea that, oh, I can take paintings and drawings and graphics that I create and put that into this magical, historically significant medium. Um, you know, it just it flipped my lid. Yeah, absolutely. Well, I, I'm 100 percent with you on that, Troy. I I got into glass through the Germans uh, 
artists as well. I, I remember opening a book on Brian Clark and he he was kind of like showing the world all the stuff that was happening in Germany and it was starting to happen in the States as well. And I didn't know you could do stuff like that with glass. And it was really inspirational. It was a kind of eye opener because you perhaps you were the same as me. I kind of thought, thought of stained glass as being religious art and it, it didn't really have any kind of attraction to me at all. And suddenly I was seeing stuff that was playing with light and color and it was exciting and it had a whole lot, load of possibilities, possibilities that you're continuing to explore. Um, so, so how do you see yourself, how do you see your art evolving? You, you, you've done this wonderful solo exhibition just now. Are you gonna continue exploring this avenue? Or are you going to start working with new materials and, and uh, develop in other ways? You know, right now, I'm really enjoying not knowing, right? Like, I, I, I don't know what's around that next corner. Um, I know that I'm, I'm going to continue working with glass. My, the, my personal body of work will continue to evolve and change like all things do. And so I, I'll continue to do that. I, I, right now, here on my workbench, I've got, you know, stuff that would look very familiar to you and a lot of your viewers as, as traditional stained glass. Um, I've got to do some repair work on a leaded window for one of the local churches. Um, so I'll continue to be doing that type of work. I'm not sure where I'll be next year other than working with glass and hopefully making, you know, beautiful, beautiful stuff. So I love to ask uh, artists that I've in interviewed for perhaps three of their significant projects that they want to bring to the audience's attention. Do you have three projects you'd like to talk about? Um, I do. I can... I can talk about a few. So, and, and we've actually already kind of touched on on, on, a, on a few of the general ideas, right? I wanted to mention uh, one pro one project in particular that I did for the Church of the Beatitudes here in Phoenix for their children's chapel. It's it's leaded glass. Uh, it was one of these rare commissions where they the design committee approached me. It's funny to call it a design committee because they they really just approached me and said that they had a donor family they wanted to make these windows for their parents. And the, the family basically said, find the right artist and let him do his thing, get out of his way. So to have that kind of freedom was, was magic. And, uh, you know, and the budget was such that I could get all really nice, you know, Lambert's uh, glass. So there was a lot of etching, um, again, trying to get that spontaneous look in, in, into that back then. So that was a magical project. A couple of other projects, um, again, you mentioned public art. So um, I was going to mention the, uh, the project that I did for Scottsdale Public Art outside the, what they call the Bell Tower, which is just outside the Museum of Contemporary Art at the Civic Plaza. That's the one where I created these composite compositions out of autonomous stained glass work um, that I created you know, uh, using software that I then put heavy black tracery over the top of, um, mounted those on acrylic, and then hung those in the space. So I thought one of the things that really attracted me to that, or one of the things that I'm really pleased with about that project was it was a way to bring in what is immediately recognized as stained glass aesthetic, but it was done in a temporary uh, installation. So the budget wasn't there to, to actually fabricate it using the glass like we normally would. Um, so to do it using this modern technology of printing it on the acrylic sheeting was a satisfactory solution, right? Um, and I think that it was also a way to, for, for so long, stained glass is really saved for our most sacred or cherished or important um, architectural spaces. So to take that and then just throw it out into a public space where people are, you know, eating their gelato and, you know, and having a beer, uh, you know, and listening to live music um, was really, really nice. And then since then, components of that installation have hung in other public spaces around town, um, kind of giving a little nod to the significance of, of all of these random places within our communities um, and our mental spaces. I, I, I'm tempted to just say, oh, my last piece that I want to talk about is really the collective show that I just finished at the museum, which was a solo ex exhibition, like you've mentioned. Um, that work, I feel like, was a pretty big departure from, from anything that I've been doing in the past. But specifically in that show, um, there's one piece that's freestanding called a virtue nudge. And it also really depicts what we were discussing, playing with the glassiness of the glass, right? Like playing with opalescence, translucence, transparence, layering the graphics, the imagery, the patterns within all of that. Um, 
and then putting it in the steel stand. And so you can have the light flow through it. You can, you can view it in the round. Um, I really like the way that one turned out. And then if you'll indulge me, I'm also going to mention one that's hanging on the wall, uh, a wall piece that's called uh, the last word. So that will be my last word. But it is it's the same idea. It's that translucent, opalescent, multiple layers, depth, spontaneous effect in fused glass. But then it's mounted over this acrylic um, collage um, painting that I'm doing. I think what's also really exciting about your approach to this is stained glass or glass is notoriously difficult to exhibit in galleries and you've found a way of exhibiting it in the round as a sculptural piece and as pieces that can be hung on walls you 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 you're using it in lots of different ways so you're not just being having to find a sort of an opening with natural light to to that's traditionally been the the thing that's caught a lot of artists out is that they you know they 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 they're limited in their in how they can display their art but you're displaying your art in so many different ways with this new exhibition it's really a great step forward and it's really encouraging to sort of see you pioneering this new visual language because it is definitely a way that you can take it into the gallery environment much more uh, successfully i think than just relying on natural light and hanging your glass up against a window yeah 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 thanks and i mean i think that you know if i was really honest with myself i think that was a big part of it um for 10 years i was doing a an art show here locally um that, that worked very well for me it was it was a nice uh, 10 years to spend but the trick is, is yeah, you might have patrons that come in or collectors that are that they're intrigued and they're interested in what you're doing, and um, and they you know they might want to have it or own it, but they're not, but they don't know how to exhibit it or how to how to hang it or how to live with it, and so, you know, by taking the glass and mounting it on these um, cradled artboards, they understand that. I mean, they oh, I can put a nail on the wall and hang this, and now I can enjoy it. You know, it doesn't have to be this complex, intimidating installation process um so yeah i think the idea of autonomous stained glass or art glass is very intriguing and i think many people would love to live and, and collect um artwork right and i and i think for me also and i think generally speaking years ago when i first started there was a real division between like the stained glass and the fused glass and the blown yeah. glass um and i think that a lot of those walls have just melted I mean, I don't think there's a real hard division between um, what a stained glass studio is doing and what a fused glass studio is doing. Um, and now we're all talking and playing with each other. So I think it's it's only good for the media. Yeah, abs I 100% am with you. I, I completely agree. I think traditional stained glass has, has had its day and people pigeonhole it as being religious art. And, and that's that's what's held it back. And, and I think you just sort of busting it wide open with using so many different materials, printed mediums and fusing and silk screen printing together and just sort of reinventing the language is absolutely the way forward. And do you still teach? Is it a teaching a component of your work as well? Do you teach others? So yeah, so I still do that. I still teach quite a bit at the, at the Mace Art Center. Three years ago, they asked me to take on the more of a lead role for the studio. So I teach, um, Four, class, four to five classes a week, pretty much year round. Uh, Troy, listen, I've absolutely loved talking with you today. It's been really fantastic. I do genuinely love your work and it's it's really exciting because you're pioneering something that I, I love that style. I love that visual style and that combining lots of materials together. And I can't wait to see how you're gonna to continue to develop it. So thank you so much for spending a little bit of time with me today. Yeah, absolutely. And, and thank you, Derek. You know, and this, this was really lovely. It was nice to have you here in my studio to chat and um, and I commend you with what you're doing. I, I really look forward to all the videos as they come out. Um, uh, you've got you've got a keen eye for for people that are doing interesting things and and engaging conversations. So thank you for that. Up out of nothing 